All right, so now I want to talk about the cell wall. And I already said the main component of the cell wall is peptidoglycan. And it has both a protein portion and a polysaccharide portion. Okay, now I want to talk more in depth about what those portions are, exactly what they consist of. And we said it's a net-like molecule. You know, it makes up the bulk of the, uh, it makes up the cell wall um, of bacteria. Gram-positive bacteria have a very thick peptidoglycan cell wall. And gram-negative bacteria have a very thin peptidoglycan cell wall. And the polysaccharide portion, okay, consists of a glycan chain. And that glycan chain has alternating NAG and NAM subunits or monomers. They're sugars, okay. And what I mean by that is we have NAG, NAM, NAG, NAM, all right? So we have these alternating in a chain, and they're held together by, um, I believe it's beta-1,3 glycosidic linkages, and I'm almost positive about that off the top of my head. So they're held together by beta-1,3 glycosidic linkages. If you think about starch or glycogen, those are generally alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkages, so we're already thinking that these are different, and they are. So we have these alternating NAG-NAM, and, and basically what, what NAG stands for is N-acetylglucosamine, and NAM stands for N-acetylmuramic acid, okay? So that's what those stand for. They have really long names, but NAG and NAM are fine for our purposes. And the protein portion consists of short chains, okay, of amino acids that link together the layers of peptidoglycan, okay? So they, they link together these layers of, um, I shouldn't say peptidoglycan, they link together these layers of NAG-NAM alternating subunits or glycan chains. And basically, they're very short peptides and, and they only occur between NAM subunits. Okay, so if I have this structure here and I have NAG, here's my second chain, let's say. So I have two chains here. the peptide portion is going to occur right here, okay? Between these NAM subunits here, okay? So right here, we're going to have what's known as peptide cross links or cross bridges, they're sometimes called. These are essentially these short chains of amino acids that link the layers of the polysaccharide together. And it only occurs, like I said, through NAM. So they're peptide cross bridges linked by NAM, linked to NAM, which is unique to bacteria. So that's another good thing. And acet acetyl um, muramic acid is unique to bacteria. Now, there's also lipopolysaccharides. And this is talking about the differences between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. So this is gram-negative, okay? Gram-negative bacteria have lipopolysaccharides, and those lipopolysaccharides are consist of a lipid portion, and they consist of a of um, a polysaccharide portion, a sugar portion, carbohydrate, and the lipid portion is embedded in the outer membrane. So the thing about gram-negative is that they have both an outer and an inner membrane. So I might not have said that before, but they have both an outer and an inner membrane, and lipopolysaccharides um, are attached to the outer membrane through, of course, the lipid portion embedded in the membrane, and the polysaccharide portion is just floating out there in the extracellular fluid. And the lip and they have lipid A, okay, and lipid A is a toxin, and that toxin usually is what induces like shock and fever in people if they're sick with a gram negative. Um, pathogenic bacteria, and that's also, it's called endotoxin, is the toxin that's produced, it's right here. So that's in gram negative, and the cell wall confers shape rigid and rigidity of the cell and helps withstand turgor pressure, so similar to plants. Plants also have this turgor pressure um, that they develop when water enters. But the bottom line here is that, you know, the cell wall is sort of protective. It's, it's you know, it's very strong. It, it has beta-1,3 glycosidic linkages. Very different. So let's talk a little bit more detail about the bacterial cell wall amino acids. So bacterial cell wall amino acids, they have what's known as diamino acids, okay? And they're amino acids that have two amino groups, 
And what happens when you have two amino groups? You can form two peptide bonds, okay? You can form two peptide bonds. And it's important for the formation of protein cross bridges or um, peptide cross bridges, rather. So bacterial cells, cell walls also have what are known as D-form and L-form amino acids. Now you might real, remember from biochemistry that L-form are the most common amino acids. Those are the ones we use in proteins, okay? But the, the thing about bacteria is they can use both D-form and L-forms of amino acids. And they incorporate them into the cell wall. So peptidoglycan is different to break, difficult to break down due to the linkage between the chains, which I said is beta-1,3, okay? So it's beta-1,3 linkages. And the last thing I wanted to say about that here is that I have that they're beta-1,4 linkages, but I believe they're beta-1,3. And they have, anyway, but the bottom line is, I have to check that for you guys. The bottom line is that they have an enzyme called lysozyme, okay, that can break down these linkages, okay. Most, we have lysozyme in our saliva, in our tears, and it's able to break down these linkages that are otherwise pretty difficult to break down.